I've heard that some people find an empty page daunting. Whether they are creating a piece of artwork on a computer or on a piece of paper, that empty space seems too massive and enormous. It's filled with possibilities and this can make people nervous when they first approach the canvas. I tend to refer to that initial surface as a canvas. If you're creating work on a computer, most software will refer to it as a canvas. I think the software developers continue using the term in an attempt to strengthen the connection between working on a computer and working on an actual canvas that is made of the canvas material and a wooden frame. The term canvas is defined by the materials in which it is constructed. You're probably wondering why this is important. Canvas, paper, these are just words. How can it have any effect on composition? Defining a canvas by its materials implies that it's neutral. It suggests it's just a surface for the art, but it isn't part of the artwork. The term creates distance between the canvas and all other elements that form the artwork. The artist Vasily Kandinsky argued that the canvas isn't neutral. It isn't an empty void, a, a space waiting for art to be placed on it. If you consider the diamond guide and the rule of thirds, this concept will make more sense. If a canvas is in portrait format, it asks for one kind of composition, and a canvas in landscape format asks for a different kind of composition. The artist is responding to the shape of the initial canvas. The canvas isn't neutral. It's an important part of the artwork. Kandinsky refers to the canvas as a basic plane. It is a surface for the art, but it is also a lot more. The term plane implies a flat surface, but in Kandinsky's work, he uses it to describe a particular aspect of a piece of artwork. This is a drawing of four lines. When these four lines come together, they cease to be lines, and instead they create the illusion they are the edges to a shape. The line is still present, but it is no longer just a line. It becomes impossible to avoid seeing this as a square. But the square wasn't drawn, only the edges were drawn. Inside those lines is the unaltered white background, although we still see the space inside those lines as being an object. We see a surface, a plane. It is the empty space inside the lines that creates the illusion of being a surface. Although the shape doesn't have to be something we instantly recognise, in order to be perceived as a surface. This abstract form isn't as recognisable as a square or a circle, yet it is still a plane. We can see it as a surface. We see the inside as having substance, even though we didn't add any information to that space. We simply highlighted its presence by drawing the lines to create the illusion of a shape. When you look at this drawing, you will see a circle, a square, and an abstract form without a name. How many planes are there in this image? Your first thought might be three, the square, the circle, and the abstract shape. In reality, there are four planes. Now it has a color, you might be able to see this shape as a plane. It has other planes placed on top, but it is still a plane. It is the first plane, what Kandinsky refers to as the basic plane. The canvas is the first shape in a composition. If I gave an artist an image of a square, their next brushstroke would be made in a way 
that responded to the presence of that square, they would see it as something to respond to and would look for ways to incorporate it in the composition. But when they are given a square piece of paper or a canvas, they can struggle to see that they must respond to the shape of a square. The canvas isn't a world of limitless possibilities. You must respond to its shape. The canvas isn't neutral. It is defined by its edges. It has its own shape. 